Hey folks, it's Lucid, and uh, we're back at this game with Late Age Sithis. We're going to speed through probably a couple more turns until we have the next war kickoff, which shouldn't be too terribly long. Uh, found no magic sites with Voice of Apsu. Found a Well of Whitewater. This is a one water site. And uh, Raven Feast, which we're casting because uh, we've got a little bit of a blood economy going. Um, so yeah. Though I, we're also just patrolling out unrest. I, I think we've had a fair bit of it. I'm, I'm not exactly sure why. Um, we found a sky split oak as well. We're sight searching air. We're kind of catching up on air and water is the TLDR of that. Uh, Record of creation. I know some of you uh, are enjoying watching that every time. Don't find anything. Um, you, well, you do get to a kind of weird point with Record of Creation where... Uh, we're, like, we've run out of labs now, so we're not able to, like, just do it <coughs> in labbed provinces. And before that, you end up doing it in places you've mostly site-searched, so your odds of finding anything are really low, but you're just kind of OCD, and you're like, well, I've technically only site-searched everything to one or two. And you're like, well, you know, the odds after that are not very high. Anyway, um, that's our little gym farm. So we're going to go ahead and go to the next turn. Uh, let's just take a real quick look at army movement before we go. Yeah, we're just shuffling things around, getting ready for this Patala uh, Kayla Moore. All right, got the next one. A uh, bunch of spells being cast. Curse of Blood, notably Tartgate. Uh, we're getting Tartarians now. And uh, let's see where we're doing that. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep, you can see we finished Conjuration 9. We're going for... Uh, and a lot of this was that we are a pretty good Tart Nation. Anytime you can put Reforming Flesh and Blood Vengeance on Tarts, they're pretty good. We don't have a great way of getting rid of Afflictions. Um, but that's kind of okay. Uh, our Tarts are still pretty good with just like a Shroud on them. And out there returning damage and stuff. Um, and we will get a few. I mean, Tarts, you, people think you have to have Gift of Nature's Bounty to use them. You don't really. Um... You know, you have a 20% chance of, uh, I'm sorry, uh, there's a 50% a chance they have uh, feeble-minded, and then it's another 50% chance for additional afflictions. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know, you can read the logic here. But in short, if you're willing to empower, you still will get some you can use uh, as commanders, like as uh, mage commanders. And the rest are fine. You know, they're pretty useful. All the commanders we can stick shrouds on, and they'll be good at uh, reflecting damage, things like that. Because tarts, because they have such high HP, they tend to like pull evocation aggro. Um, they are annoying, though. I remember at the end of this game being like, God damn it, why did I summon so many tarts? Because uh, it's like you're trying to move anywhere, and it's... I don't know. It's like having a committee decide... It's like if you had a committee to decide every action of your life. You know, it would be so annoying. You have people disagreeing, squabbling. You can't get them to all go in the same direction. There's always some tart who wants to commit genocide instead of move from province A to province B. Like, come on, guys. Let's just do it. Anyway, um, I digress. Um, more conversion. You can see we've gotten a bit better. This is a, a bit higher ratio. Um, we'll see what we've done different. I think we have some astro mages here to help with... Um, yeah, that's pretty good soul vortex density when you look at it. So, that's going pretty well. Um, we've also split up our worm production. Uh, if we get flamed from, flamed from the sky or something like that, I don't want to have all my eggs in one basket. Uh, later, we're going to put domes up here and stuff too. Um, whenever we think that might be an issue. But... Um, I don't think that's sufficient. We're, there's also no reason to keep them all in one province. So, uh, I mean, there is a reason you don't waste turns moving them around. But we've got enough of them. You know, we've, you can see we've moved a lot of them here uh, to our capital. We've got a fair number here as well uh, in this province. So, uh, we, are, we are moving them around. Um, we're also later going to move a fair amount over here to Bogarus, just to have some production on this side. Um, 
Uh, Arco is now taking this. This was, what is this? This was the last, who was this? I, th I think this was Raga, yeah. Raga got Dom pushed, which is a pretty hilarious way to, to go. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, Goddess of Raga has been permanently vanquished at the end their dominion did not touch a, ch a single province and her life force died with her dominion so um that's kind of wild but pan has now outlived arco um man has a big army on this pangean fort where's pangea's capital right here yeah so uh yeah man's ready to to fight and they're Right now, I'm getting kind of pulled, tied up in some Diplo, too, between Man and an Ulm. And Man has made it very clear that they want me to help them fight Ulm, because Ulm is a blood power. And Ulm wants me to help them fight Man. Um, but I am much more worried about Calum, because they're two times everybody's research, and they're birds, and uh, they have a ton of gym income, too. So the problem is I, I can't go on Ulm. Because just because of geography. And if these guys fight, there's a good chance Caleb is going to attack man and take their thrones or throne rush while they're busy. Um, but I also don't have much of a Caleb border. Once Caleb eats... Oh, so it started. Okay, so here's Caleb eating Patala. Now, apparently, Caleb and Patala have also talked. So there's a bunch more Diplo I haven't really shared with you yet that I'm going to share with you now. I didn't really know the right turn to do it. But um, so here's what happened. Kale, everybody's been worried about Caleb being too far ahead. And and they have been. I mean, it's with very good reason. I'm 98% sure I could have won with this Caleb position. Like, if, if they put me into the Kalen position, like, seven turns ago, I'm pretty sure I could have just run over the world. Um, but, so Kalen is, was kind of in the process of doing that. They were trying to be aggressive, and, which they need to, right? Kalen is not the nation, pretty much in most games, that is going to scale the best into the deep late game. Not to say they're a scrub in the late game, but that's not their peaking time, right, compared to most other nations. They're a mid-game nation. So it doesn't mean you have to end the game by then, but you need to be spiraling in the mid-game, which they're kind of doing. So Kalem declares on Patala. Patala's like, hey, guys, we're all worried about Kalem. Come help. I'm like, I can't really help. I don't border them because I don't. Um, man is like, I can't help. I'm worried about Alm, uh, Arco and Arithia are like, okay, we can help. So Arco and Arithia, uh, in their non-aggression packs with Caleb, and they're also both free agents, right? So this is a risk of Caleb going to war. Hey, if I go to war, I have got some free agents on my border who might attack me. And, you know, that is indeed a risk, um, but I think it's something Caleb has to do anyway. You can't just... If people bully you as Caleb into sitting there in the mid-game and not doing anything, uh, it's not going to work out. So Caleb is actually a pretty good wheeler and dealer. Um, I thought Caleb was going to fight them, by the way. I did not think Caleb would try to negotiate <coughs> with Arco and with Arithia. Um... Because Caleb is actually a nation that's also reasonably well positioned to fight off coalitions. They have really high mobility troops. So if they have an army that you can't really kill, um, that army can be all over the place. It can kill something over here, kill something over here, kill something over here. You know, it's super mobile. Um, and they can also raid very well. I mean, it's just a very versatile nation, in my opinion, in terms of, like, the, the strategic movement that they have uh, and the options. Um, and then, you know, late age, the mages aren't amazing. Your your mage core in late age, you have the the cat mages, which are great, the uh, Hera Elders. These guys are sick. Kind of expensive. Um, these end up being your main mage core. The Hera Seraphs, a lot of times... Um, and they kind of, they actually suffer, I would say, mostly from too many randoms. If they were three randoms, it would kind of be nicer. But because there's so many, 
you end up only getting two-fifths of them that are two in any path. And these are not great paths to be one in. The water one can do Frozen Heart. The earth one is pretty garbage. The fire one is pretty garbage. So, but nevertheless, this is still kind of, it's often the, the main workhorse mage. Um, and this Caleb in particular, I think, made a ton of iron crafters too. So they've got those hanging around. But, um, yeah, so anyway, you can have your mage core show up. You can have a lot of air twos, a lot of death twos potentially. Uh, you're going to have Wailing Winds, Aerofend, Fog Warriors, things like that. <clears throat> um, and especially in cold, this is the other reason they fight coalitions reasonably well, is if they have a pretty large contingent of these uh, ice-clad... Yeah, these guys. Um, these guys have sick protection and cold, and Caleb's always cold three. So anyway, fighting on the defensive, they get the opportunity to take a lot more fights in cold. Um, and those guys tend to do really well. So, um, anyway, you know, there's options that they have. Uh, I was expecting them to fight, um, and kind of expecting them to win, and I was coming up with plans about what I would do. That was why I have all these troops over here, right? Because Caleb was going to, like, let us have a lot of the Patala land if, uh, you know, basically just, uh, because we were going to be neighbors and yeah, I mean, it was, it was hinted at, but it never said directly that I would probably fight them if they didn't let me have some, but I also didn't want to do anything in the war and not because I didn't want to fight. I, I could fight and kill Patala pretty easily. Um, just cause I don't want to be rude to the Patala player. I want to let Patala at least have the chance to throw off Caleb, which I don't think is going to work. Um, so Caleb uh, negotiates with Arco and Arithia and ends up giving, I think, like four forts, including like a throne to Arco, like gives up major infrastructure to Arco and then gives up major infrastructure to Arithia and he's wheeling and dealing with them and they keep pushing him for more terms. And instead of him getting upset and being like, no, I would never do that. These terms are ridiculous. He just is like wheeling and dealing like, oh, well, I wish I could, but I mean, you're asking for so much. Like, what about this? And before the thing is all said and done, he's getting them to pay gold for the forts they're going to take. Um, and they're, only, they're getting like, I don't know, they're getting a fair amount. They're getting maybe like, let's say eight provinces in total and four forts. But what he's getting out of the war with Patala is like, uh, like 14 or something provinces and like six forts or something. Like it's a lot. You know, he's getting this Patala throne. You know, he's going to be getting Patala's capital. He's uh, taking a bunch of these things. So he, I haven't really seen this done like this in a game. And I think he did it well. However, I think he could have, I would have fought because I don't know if he knows, maybe he doesn't know. I don't know if he knew the kind of advantage he had over these people in terms of research. Um, Arco now had pretty good research, but also nations that communion up really don't like you jumping on them with flyers turn one. Um, so I don't know. I would have been really interested to see how a fight here goes. My money kind of would have been on Caleb, but um, there's also problems to, as the game goes later, I don't know, like... You have to deal a little bit, worry a little bit more about like flames from the sky and stuff. We're not really at the flames from the sky phase, but I mean, we could be. Some some nations definitely have it. Arkham might have it. Um, anyhow, so they end up giving up a fair amount of land to Arco and to Arithia. Arithia barely even has the troops to siege down all the forts they get. Arithia is going to be struggling now for the next 15 turns, at, just as things tend to play out. He ends up being part of these wars and getting things negotiated and given to him and all these forts. He didn't have the armies to siege him down quickly. He's he's like trying to print out troops fast enough to siege down all the stuff that's been given to him. Um, which I find hilarious. Uh, okay, so the net effect of this is that K, uh, Patala, who thought they had won Arco and Arithia to their side, finds out that... Uh, they joined their side only to leave it. 
and that uh, they've been bought off and they're not going to be coming to the rescue of Patala. And so Patala says, ah, oh, fine, I guess I'm going to lose then and doesn't even really bother playing it out. Now, on one hand, that kind of sucks. Um, on the other hand, I don't think, I think it was kind of a hopeless matchup. The thing is, is Patala doesn't have magic weapons. Um, their god is dead, who could do Wailing Winds. But aside from that, and they also had a lot of archery stuff. Um, I, I think these are the sticks and stones ones. But, um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're getting to the place where Fog Warriors is going to be up, Wailing Winds, uh, and Aerofend, and Storm. And that's going to kind of invalidate a lot of the stuff Patala could do. Um... So yeah, it's it's gonna be a little tricky, but uh, I don't I think that Patala might could do something. The other problem is Patala could have like one army. Caleb could just dodge that army, right? So Caleb, you know, Caleb puts everything on their cap. They have to move the army here, and then they fly everything over here and siege this. Well, the army can't get there by the time this gets stormed, you know. So they could just kind of pick Patala apart as the other thing. These are things I think you have to think about when you're playing a nation like Patala, is like, how are you going to deal with that? Uh, birds are often frustrating to deal with, but um, being able to put traps up for armies is a great uh, tool to have. You know, like if you can do a Wind of Death trap, that's also something Kalem can do. Um, you know, stuff like that sort of helps with the problem. Um, you know, we can do bone grinding traps potentially. Like we can do a bone grinding trap in one province, but have our main army in another. We also just have more armies than anyone. So we've got that going for us. Anyway, so this whole thing's starting. Uh, Kalem has basically said, uh, Kalem and Patala have talked and Patala is going to basically be giving them their capital with the understanding they get to mobilize and move these troops across their empire to fight Pan. <laughs> Which is crazy. Which is crazy. But that's the agreement they've come to. And with that, we are also moving in to take Patala stuff. So we're, you know, we've had all these turns to prepare, but it's not, you know, we're moving out with, uh, we're moving out with our army, but uh, some things kind of look like they're a bit thrown together. We just took like Saramancers and we're like, okay, we're attacking. Uh, where are these guys going? Looks like we're moving these guys back. I think, oh yeah, we're trying to move an army here. I want to have, so this uh, throne is going to go to Kalem. This has been negotiated. But I want to have an army here because I'm anticipating as soon as Patala dies, like a throne rush starts. And I want to have an army stationed here, I think, to come up here and check this Patala slash soon-to-be Kalem throne. So that's what's happening there. Uh, let's go to the next turn. All right, turn 60. Uh, Record of Creation found a merchant of the dam in a cave of clouds. That's uh, one blood site, or a one blood slave per per turn site and a uh, one air site. Uh, do we have any luck with the rest of the things? No. Uh, a couple more Saramancer, or one more Saramancer drowning as we have uh, or twice born triggering. Here's another one of our little uh, Intelligentsia purges. Reasonably efficient. Um, we probably are also using Soulstone here, I'm guessing. Let's see. We're doing a magic phase attack. Yeah, this is Soulstone. This is not going to work. There's too much PD, I think. Yeah. Soulstone, you really, it only works usually against like 5 PD or 6. Yeah, it really struggles against anything higher. <clears throat> but, um, yeah. We'll just, uh, the armies of Satis are marching out. This is not going to be a super exciting war if you can't tell. Um, but this kind of needs to happen. This is the game state evolving. Patala was a little too weak to stay in the game. They're kind of a liability being next to a major power, whoever that major power is. Um, just the position is not strong enough. They don't have enough income. They don't have enough armies. Um, and especially with Kalem being able to throne rush, Patala is always going to be like a juicy target. 
uh, that you know wouldn't be able to defend their throne. So this is a kind of a good evolution of the game state. You can see we're raiding with Sarmancers. Uh, well, I'll actually zoom in. So you, some of this is trivial, but other parts is kind of important. Um, we're going to do invulnerability first, and these guys with invulnerability are actually very resistant to kind of casual archer fire and things like that. Now we're just going to make skeletons. Um, I think this is like 10 PD maybe, but you can see it's not even close. The, they were getting shot at pretty much the whole time by the, by the archers. What was a 6 PD? Okay. Uh, oh, we lost an archer here. I mean, an archer or a Saramancer. Could have been a crossbow. Oh, uh, one of them. Oh, I think they soul vortexed each other. Yeah, that's the problem putting them right next to each other, is they can soul vortex each other and kill them. Oh, yeah, he got soul vortexed and then he got a bleeding thing. So that's just really unlucky. But you can spread them out a bit more. And how close did we have them together? It's kind of nice at the beginning if they're in the same tile. Yeah, we had them spaced one apart. They're not, the soul vortex isn't going to hit at the beginning, only when they walk forward. I think this is fine. You know, they've got really high MR. They're very unlikely to get killed from a casual soul vortex walking forward. Um, you also could avoid this by just having them cast spells um, or having only one of them advance and cast and the other cast. You know, it just depends what you're fighting. That could be better or worse. This is like a very low probability outcome, I think. Um, Caleb's rolling out, and what's interesting is because this is all negotiated, they don't have any mage support, because Patalus just said they'll give it to them. So they're just moving in a huge squad of troops. This would normally be very, very dangerous to move this many troops around without any mages. Um, and some of us watching are like, hmm. Like, I wouldn't even do that. Um... I mean, he got to see that the, the people physically leave it. Like, he knew it was empty, but I wouldn't even do this under any circumstances. I just don't trust people. <laughs> like, somebody's like, I'll give it to you for free. I'm still going to put some mages in there and script them to do things. You know, I don't... Because you could just put a golem to tank all this or something. You know, like... Anyway. Um, but yeah, you can see how quickly things have gone to hell for Patala. Um, we're a little slower and... Caleb took this province that we softened up with a Wraith Lord. Uh, we were like, hey, this is part of our little drawn border. Uh, so we are going to be taking that. I think he was trying to move in and hoping I was scared. It was kind of interesting. We we're having a conversation at some point, And he was saying, I I'm not trying to like puff up my chest when I'm talking with players in general. Um, and he was telling me, as we were kind of drawing the border, he was like, yeah, this matchup is so Caleb favored. And I was like, oh, okay, is it? Uh, like, what do you, you know, what do you, why is that or something? And he was like, oh, uh, you know, wither bones and stuff is just going to kill all those undead you have. I was like, yeah, that's true. And I just left it at that. <laughs> it is not Caleb favored, guys. If you're wither bonesing these worms, you're having a very bad day. Um, let's just look at this spell real quick. Because... Uh, it's not enough. You have to hit a worm like three times with this. It's a pretty big area of effect. It is guaranteed if you hit a pile with, like, if you use that six area of effect and you hit people with this, you are dead. So it's going to basically guaranteed kill the mage. And you have to hit them three times with it. Meanwhile, they're going to regen this up over, the you know, th what, three turns, four turns? Um, so... If you have a few mages with anti-magic cast on them and going after a few worms, yeah, you could kind of kill them. But if you have four or five hundred worms, mm, no. So we're going to be moving in here. Uh, this is the negotiated stuff that was coming to us. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to make sure we secure this throne because this is not... It's not even like we're just going to take it. We're moving in with mage support... Um, we're going to be having a tremendous number of worms. And these guys aren't going to leave. We're going to keep them in this throne to block a Kalem throne rush. <clears throat> um, yeah. So I think that's mostly it for this turn. And probably for this episode, since we're at like 25 minutes. So 
Um, yeah, it's kind of exciting. Thing, pieces are moving on the board again, which is fun. Um, and they're not really going to stop moving too much for the rest of the game. So uh, look forward to seeing you in the next episode. And until then, take care.